Hi there booktube, it's Eleanor here and it's time again for a uh, three middle grade review video. Uh, today I'm going to talk about the first two and then I will clip on the end of this, the last one which I'm currently just finishing, but I wanted to make sure that I recorded the others while I still had them sort of fresh in my mind and had time to film. The first one I want to talk to you about is The Girl Who Drank the Moon by Kelly Barnhill. I have had this on my radar for quite a while and um, because I stacked up all my middle grade books this one came out of my shelves and I realised that I really really fancied reading it and I'm so pleased I did. I actually listened to the majority of this on audiobook and it was a really good audiobook. I really enjoyed it in that way. I thought the narrator did the different characters really well. It's the story of this town Every year on a certain day, the townsfolk leave, leave a baby in this clearing in the woods as sort of a sacrifice to this witch that they have heard about who is meant to come and take this baby away and it keeps their town safe from this witch. Um, it's like an offering. Um, not many people question this, um, but the feeling of loss in this village is huge. And one day we're following this baby that is left and we're following the witch who collects this baby and actually it turns out that this witch isn't evil and doesn't require an offering and she's not quite sure, she doesn't know why people are leaving this baby but she's realised that every year a baby is left in the middle of the forest alone, she's worried about its health, she can't understand why people do it so she goes and she takes this baby and she takes it through this forest to the other side to a town where she gives the baby to a family that look after it and raise raise it and um, raise these children. She feeds them on this special um, magic as well, this starlight um, magic to just keep these babies healthy and one day she feeds this baby that she's collected, this baby that we're following, um, but unfortunately she feeds it an enormous amount of moonlight um, and this baby becomes quite magical itself. She realises she can't leave it with the townsfolk and so she decides she's going to raise this child herself. So along with her and um, this little girl and a tiny little baby dragon and a bog like creature. Um, we follow the story of this witch and this little girl and it's brilliant and the twists and turns are really good and the magic is beautiful, the relationships are really lovely and the story slowly unravels and we learn the secrets that are going on in these places and I just thought it was really really good and um, it's a story that I really enjoyed and I was totally immersed in the whole time I was listening to it. Um, so this is a really strong four stars and I definitely recommend it. The other book is a bit of a change from my usual sort of more magical fantasy middle grade and that is Amal Unbound by Aisha Saeed. This is a book that I'd heard quite a bit about. I'm not generally middle grade contemporary um, but this is set totally out of my realms of comfort in terms of knowledge and so I think in that way um, I really enjoy middle grade because it's not something that I feel I've sort of lived through or um, it's not set in sort of a modern and contemporary UK. This one is set in a small remote town in Pakistan and the um, girl, our main protagonist Amal, is at school. She's desperate to be a teacher, she works really hard, she's helping the younger children. Um, she realises it's going to be hard but she comes from a family that are sort of middly well off. They're not rich by any accounts but she could potentially go and train to be a teacher which is what she wants to do and that's what she's got her sights set on. However one day there's a chance encounter at the local market with the sort of local ruler of the village, the landlord, the man that sort of owns everything, um, his son and this sets in motion a ch total change of her life forever. She ends up having to go and work for this man at his big giant estate um, on the other side of this sort of town um, as his servant and we're sort of following um, the story of her and how this has happened and the injustice of it. We're following how she's treated there. We're following how a little bit how women are treated and how that works. And there are parts of this that fit, seemed like they were quite easy. Um, and by that I mean I feel like 
it all resolved and gave us that nicer ending and things moved quite quickly more so than I you know would potentially think it would and it tied up quite nicely in a bow which I like in books um, but I felt was probably a little bit unrealistic of real life um, but if you allow yourself to realize that it is fiction it's not a real life story then I think it is really good and really enjoyable and I really um, I whizzed through this one it's not massively long it's only um, sort of 250 220 pages um, the cover is absolutely beautiful and um, depicts very well the sort of ideas in the book and I really enjoyed it I enjoyed it while I was reading it and um, I thought the story was really interesting and so I gave this one four stars as well okay so it's a few days later um, about ten and a half inches <laughs> later in my hair which I've just washed so you can't see but it's so short compared to what it was um, but I quite like it I'm just getting used to it and I have now finished uh, Love Sugar Magic, A Dash of Trouble by Anna Maria Mariano. This is the third book that I'm going to review in this video and I picked this one up because I saw it on Adriana from uh, Perpetual Pages channel. She raved about it and I thought yes I'm going to give this one a go and I wasn't disappointed. I really enjoyed it. I ended up listening to it on audio which I think was really good. I really enjoyed this because our main character was just so sweet and a little bit naive and quite Quite cheeky and fun. Leonora or Leo for short is a member of quite a large family. Um, she lives with her mum and dad and I think she has twin sisters and then two other sisters all older than her and she the family owns a bakery and she loves nothing more than um, being involved in baking however more recently she's been feeling a little bit shut out she feels shut out um, when they have the um, festival of the dead which I believe is called De Los Muertos apologies if I've totally butchered that um, but the Day of the Dead festival and her family always produce these wonderful um, things from the bakery for people they take special orders and they have a special tent and she feels really left out she's not invited to take the day off school and prepare like all the other girls are and so she decides that she's going to sneak away um, and try and find out what's going on. And what happens is um, a discovery of um, Bruja, which is uh, witches. Her family are witches. She discovers um, that they do magic and she decides that she doesn't care if she's too young. She wants to get involved and all sorts of escapades ensue. And I just really enjoyed it. It was really fun. It wasn't surprising. There wasn't anything in here that was surprising. I think you sort of know what stage you're going to get to. You know the outcome of the book really. And you know um, that it's just gonna be a fun ride getting there. And it was, there was some mishaps and um, madcap um, things that happened. And I really enjoyed that. Um, and more importantly, I think this book is about friendship and about family and looking at family and family dynamics and looking at friendships there's um one of the main characters in this is leo's best friend who she hasn't seen for quite a while and it's about the dynamics of that friendship and feeling like you need to bring something to the table in order to make that friendship valid and yeah it was just really good really good fun if you're looking for something sweet and um, slightly magical and a bit of a fun adventure but you know nothing too unexpected and no nothing too heavy um, I think this is a great great book I love the front cover as well pick it up if that's something that you're in the mood for anyway that's it for me for this week I'm not sure if I will be doing a middle grade video next Friday with three wrap-ups it depends um, because I have been reading some other books in between at the moment so uh, there may be one up or I might have a week off and come back to you again with some more but I've been reading lots I've read nine middle grades so far this month and I've really enjoyed them all they've all been three stars or above which has been brilliant so yes bring on some more is what I say and uh, yeah let me know if you've read these or if any of these pique your fancy and I look forward to speaking to you soon. Bye for now booktube.